What's going on YouTube? Welcome to episode 66 of the USS Enterprise D tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button helping me in the support of the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Today we got about a 22 minute episode. We're going to be beginning our work on the deflector control room, um, which would be pretty cool. By the time this thing is done, uh, I think you all will be pretty happy with it. Uh, so we're just actually going to jump right into this and throw down some sea lanterns and then determine our center. Um, but this is going to be one of the rooms that we're going to have to take liberties with because if you go on Google and you search USS Enterprise D deflector dish or deflector control room more specifically, you're not going to find any interior shots of what this thing look, looked like outside of loose blueprints. So what that's going to mean is that we're going to have to figure out what this room is going to look like and what we're ultimately going to do is use um, the past deflector dish control rooms that we've done in the past as a loose reference, but try to modernize it a little bit more um, within a TNG era feel. Uh, but right now we're just actually going to determine our center based off this blue oval. And basically we're going to have to have seven on the left and seven on the right with the dead center block being considered a dead space block. So I'm going to count out this way and verify how many we have, and then we're going to count on this side. So we've got six. That means we have to get rid of one of these center blocks. So now we've got seven. We're going to verify that. And we're going to go to the right side, make sure we have seven. All right, cool. So we've got our center established. And then we're just going to do a straight line going down to the bottom half of the blue oval. Now the center portion of it, fairly easy since it's only two blocks wide. It's pretty self-explanatory to determine that center. We're just going to make it double wide just to keep this thing even. So we're going to count out. Three. Going out three out so far, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. In the twenty first row, we're going to add a sea lantern. And we're just doing that right now for the lighting to brighten it up a little bit because as we go back, it is going to get a little dark. All right. But we're going to make it a little bit longer than that, I think, because we don't want it to be too short. And uh, we can take advantage of the room that we have right now because everything else that we're going to be doing down here, um, it's not really going to be taking up that much room. Anyway, we're going to continue on. We're going to add 10 more rows. So I think that would be pretty decent length. Don't necessarily need anything more than that. That'll be enough to build out the inner workings of this thing to make it look pretty cool. But to give you an idea, think of the deflector control room for the Disco Era Enterprise, but modernized and much larger, and then also fitting. Um, the shape of what we have uh, for the deflector dish. And to do that, we're going to use this, the bottom side of the blue oval. We're just going to cut an outline of it. And that's basically going to be our template. As you can see, we're using what we have. We're working smarter. This way we don't have to hit up a pixel circle generator or try to figure out the pattern again. We've already got it established. So we're just going to use what we have. And pretty much what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be skipping a row. So this way it gives like a ribbed look. So every other row is going to be, it's going to have a gap in between it. And then we're just going to be repeating this pattern until we get to the last line of our center here. And 
And I will say that even with the screenshot that I have, the one thing that I haven't established yet is what I'm going to do in the very center of what I'm building now. Because I did do something like that for the Disco Era Enterprise. I thought about using a, a similar cut, a color palette, which I may very well end up doing. Um, but I'm still kind of thinking on it uh, because I'm not really in a rush to fully complete this room. I'd rather take my time in the certain areas that I need to rather than just rush to get it done. So uh, with the deflector control room, we're going to be bouncing back and forth between it. Um, I try to avoid doing this, but this is something that I do talk about, that if you're not 100% sure on what you want to do, step away from it and just let it marinate for a bit and kind of figure out what you want to do. Uh, so this way, when you, you are ready to come back to it, you approach it with a fresh set of eyes and you're not frustrated or trying to figure out what you're going to build out. I do this anytime I'm working on my ships. Um, however, I have been trying to make a point that when I start building a room, you know, I just build it, you know, through consistently. But there are going to be scenarios like this, especially when we're getting into some of these larger ships or ships where they haven't shown as much. Like the enter the Constitution class Enterprise, like it's honestly, it's probably the easiest ship out of any ship to build in Starfleet. Um, and the only reason I say that is because so much of the interior has been shown between when you consider uh, the original series, what they've shown in Star Trek Discovery, and then of course all the movies and then the reboot. So the Constitution class, you can really um, do exactly what I did for that build, uh, which when we do eventually build uh, the Enterprise A, uh, once we hit a thousand subscribers, I'll show you what I mean, but um, I basically took every single room that was ever shown from either the shows or the movies and i kind of blended them together to come up with a fully completed interior now that we can't really do with the uh the enterprise d because there's only so much of the ship that they they showed you know and uh some of the areas here and there you know we can kind of get away with it um because we can use concept art and things like that to get an idea of things that they wanted to do to flesh out the ship like in this you know later on when we start working on the mall and um, the aquarium for the navigation dolphins these are things that they you know conceptualized they just never got a chance to to uh, fully um, uh, form out the idea because they just didn't have the budget for it pretty much is what it can kind of came down to because I mean when you watch the next generation um, they use a, you know, a lot of those same rooms over and over again. This is something that I talk about too. And like you also notice uh, if, if you haven't, you know, watch Next Generation and see if you notice this, that like considering the scale of the ship, a lot of these rooms actually aren't that big, you know? And that's another opportunity here where we can kind of work off of that. And um, of course we'll have those rooms too and we'll stay true to them. But we can still, we can do these over the top rooms and larger scale rooms to help because that's going to help um, with the scale of the ship. So when you're going through it and you're walking through some of these massive rooms, it's going to help to uh, sell the fact that this is quite a large ship, uh, which is kind of cool, you know, like, um, but that's just something you never saw in the next generation, you know, because they just couldn't afford to do it at the time. Today, I mean, it would be actually kind of cool to see what they could do, but I don't think that they would do it justice because, I mean, if you've seen what they've done with the modern Star Trek shows, um, they use CGI as a crutch too much. That's kind of where, where I'm leading to, that they don't use enough practical sets where they can, use, they can use a combination, basically, of practical sets and CGI to make it look a lot better. But I don't think they'll ever end up doing that. That's what I would honestly personally do. But anyway, enough of that ramble. That's just kind of my my thought process when I'm working on rooms like this on the ship. And um, these are things you should be thinking out thinking about too, because when you start thinking this way, it's going to help you to um, flesh out your ship, because you never know what what you might stumble onto in your thought process on different things that you want to add. And I always kind of like have a rule of thumb, like if um, does it is it something that should be on a Federation ship? That's kind of just the way that I look at it. And if it's not something that's necessarily on a Federation ship, could you get away with having it? And if you can, 
Um, if you can justify that, then hey, go for it. Because, you know, these ships are imaginary and you can totally do that. Nobody can say, oh, that's not on the Enterprise D. It's like, well, how do you know that? They've only showed maybe 9% of the whole interior. And sure, they have the blueprints, but the blueprints vary when you look at them online. They When you go ship or uh, blueprint to blueprint, depending on who's made it. So point I'm making, and I say this all the time, have fun with your build. Take creative liberties. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're you're pretty much adding your own personality and your your artistic spin on the ship. So you might as well have a little bit of fun with it. And that's what I try to do now because, you know, these ships, they can get a little repetitive otherwise. And what's the point of building, you know, the same 10 rooms ship to ship if you don't add in a little bit of variety? And um, that's something you're going to see a lot more of going forward, especially as, you know, we start... Um, moving further out to some of these ships where we've seen in even less of their interior, we're going to have to get very creative and just look for random pieces of concept art and things like that. I still even do that for some of my builds where I'm at now, but we'll see more of that in the future. Because, you know, this is all tying into the fact that pretty much everything that I did with the deflector control room was artistic liberties, 110%. But I still feel that, um, it came out pretty awesome. I'm actually very happy with it, and I'll stand by it through and through. Um, I've never, I haven't been able to find a screenshot or video online of this section of the ship. And uh, if there is such a thing, I challenge you, hey, post it in the comments section. Let me know. I would honestly love to see it because I always do that when before I start a build. you got to do your research because the more um, – uh, material you have to work off of these are the things that are going to help you keep your ship in reality even while you're or not reality but keep your ship in the realm of staying true to it while you're also taking artistic liberties and i, I haven't said this in a while but this is something that is so vitally important is that you focus on the moments like a clear example when you think of next generation what are the rooms that you always see you see the bridge you see the holodeck you see 10 forward you see the medical, uh, Dr. Crusher's medical bay. Um, we see uh, Miles O'Brien's uh, uh, transporter room, uh, 10 forward. These are the moments that I'm talking about, or the captain's ready room. And when you start to add these rooms in, then as you're showing these ships off to people, they're like, oh, okay, like I remember this area, or I remember that area, and you're keeping it true uh, to what we saw on the show. So now... Once you have that stuff out of the way, you can kind of play a little bit and have a little bit of fun. And we can, you know, let our imaginations kind of run wild on um, how maybe some of these rooms would have looked, you know. And I, I, I got to be honest, I think that's one of the things that I do have the most fun with, but it's also can be the most challenging part is that, and it can be, it can be kind of scary too when you think about it because you're, you're taking a risk building something out from scratch that you have really have no reference off of at all. And the problem that you're going to run into is how true is it to how the rest of the ship looks. And uh, that'll be something that we'll address as we go, because once we get more and more of our interior done, we can start to gauge that, you know, this is why I say that when you, uh, you, you build out your rooms on your interior you want to take certain traits from those rooms so you, when you go room to room, it feels like you're going through the Enterprise D as opposed to just having a bunch of random rooms inside. And um, that will help us too. And, you know, this would be considered an engineering section of the ship, um, which we'll get into more of that as we go. Because like I said, we'll, we're kind of going to be jumping back and forth between this section, I think. In tomorrow's episode, we're going to be kind of um, jumping over to starting out the beginning of the lower sections of the very dead center of the saucer sections, like you're talking the mall and um, the beginning areas for the bridge. And then, of course, the turbo lift to go up into it. And then eventually around that would be the mall and then the aquarium uh, to kind of tie it all together. But so far, we're looking pretty good here. I'm not going to lie, I did consider skipping through a lot of this today because it is a little repetitive, but um, 
I decided just to run with it because this could I could foresee this being tricky for somebody, so I'm just gonna let it ride. But still, I'm actually really excited to start showing some of this stuff off because I feel like I've been talking about it for months and we're just really now getting into the point where we can um, start building out the interior. I've actually been getting a lot of positive feedback from uh, new subscribers and people that have been finding me on uh, YouTube. I had somebody comment the other day saying that was, you know, quite inspiring that uh, I take the time to build these ships out block by block and, you know, inspires them to try it. And uh, I think that's awesome, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I started this channel to help other people out that have, you know, either that they currently build starships on Minecraft or maybe they never have and they wanted to and they just kind of don't know where to go, uh, don't know where to start or you're just looking for references. And that's going to be another thing, too. And if I can kind of, you know, inspire people a little bit with that, that's just, you know, it, it's pretty freaking cool, to be honest with you. Because when I first started here on Minecraft, the, you, you couldn't find stuff like this to save your life. And even today, you can't find it, you know. Um, there's just really nobody that's building, you know, full-on tutorials like this for these ships. And... Granted, I'm not going over every single dimension on here, and if that's really what you need, um, I may not necessarily be the person to, to help you get there, because at the end of the day, you kind of have to have a little bit of creativity in you. I think that's really the only thing that anybody needs to build on Minecraft. You have to be a creative person, and if you can do that, and you have patience, you can 110% build an Enterprise D of this scale. You can build Deep Space Nine if you want to, or you can go into any realm that you want to, science fiction-wise. You want to build Battlestar Galactica? Go for it. Take the time just to do it right, though, you know? Because I feel like that's my number one asset that I have on here, is that I take my time and do it right. And if it doesn't come out the right way, then I'm going to do it again. And I'll keep doing it again until it comes out the way that I want it to. But... I have the advantage that I've been building on here long enough that I've made so many mistakes when I first started building is that I've eventually learned from those mistakes. And that's something too that I try to help people out where I can and talk about that. Um, because, you know, if I use a lot of my, I feel like if I use my thought process and talk about the things that I think about and um, I show you guys how I build these things or if I make changes to these ships, why I make these decisions that I make. Because in the long run, that's going to help you too to make your ships better. Because there's a reason why I build these ships 110% the way I do them. And it's all because that I've just, I've done enough of them to know what works and to know what doesn't work. But at the same time, I'm not saying that, hey, this is the only way that you can do it and you have to do it this way. And if you don't do it this way, it's not going to work. You're, you're never going to hear me say that. At the end of the day, there's a thousand and one ways that you can build these ships. And this tutorial is just meant as a guideline to kind of help get you going. And if you want to use it as a full-on reference, go for it. But maybe this will just give you a couple of ideas. That's always kind of how I look at it. And, like, that's why, you know, um, sometimes even, like, when I have uh, specific things that I'm looking at, you know, I'll still sometimes I'll take artistic liberties with my references. Just because for whatever reason, you know, I might think that it might look better. And, you know, it's always a good thing to experiment, too. Always it's imperative. Because making those, um, or not necessarily making, but trying things out, it's uh, it can be cru a crucial in a ship build. Because you're, you're, you can stumble upon greatness when you do that. And I can't tell you how many times I've stumbled upon greatness just by be by willing to try out new things and um seeing where it goes to be honest with you what we're doing right now this deflector dish um the base outline for it i referenced from the disco era enterprise and that was just being willing to try something new you know because that deflector control room 
um, was completely different from what I had done in the past on the uh, 2016 uh, Enterprise. And if you don't know what I mean, go on my channel and look at my older videos. I have tours of that ship. There's no commentary on those because those are like my the first videos I was putting up on Minecraft. But they have music, you know, to keep uh, keep you kind of entertained while you're watching the tours. And I might actually end up doing that one of these days. But I haven't had anybody really ask for it. That's honestly the only reason why I haven't done a tour of the 2016 Enterprise uh, with commentaries because I just haven't really had anybody ask. But with that being said, you know, we've got the 2016 tutorial of uh, Enterprise A coming up when, if and when we ever hit a thousand subscribers. And when that does happen, um, we will do a tour of that ship. So you can look forward to that too. And I'm actually looking forward to going back to doing that ship because I feel like I've learned a lot from building in Minecraft that I can do it um, I can do it a far better service than what I did on my previous attempt because that was more of the learning experience, you know. Anyway, getting a little bit what we got going on here. We're almost done building out our frame here. We're just adding in some sea lanterns to help us out a little bit with the light. But we're really trying to replicate this ribbing effect that we have going on here where every other row is a gap a single uh, block gap you can kind of see them just kind of um, each layer I'm kind of just bringing them all the way down I'm going back and deleting because I'm just trying out different things here as far as a process that I'm building in to do it a little bit faster as opposed just to building out one of these one at a time Yeah, because now at this point on this side, when we come back on each of these rows, we're just filling in the middles. Super easy. Already completed the work. Already know where we need to stop. We don't even have to think about it at this point. We just have to fill it in. And that's why I did it this way, just to save a little bit of time. So now this way, when we come back to the deflector control room, We'll have um, we'll have something to work with, you know. We've got a scale now for how big this thing is going to be, and when you think about it, it's kind of it's kind of big, and we want it to be big because our deflector dish is freaking massive. So you want to have a big deflector control room because of how big this thing is. And that's just my thoughts around it because really this upper section here. Um, up here on this our engineering deck, um, we're not going to be going down further below until we go further back in the ship. So all everything below this blue line here, that's all going to be for the deflector control room, which is it's I'm telling you, it's going to come out awesome. And if uh, you need a refresher, just go back to uh, reload the page uh, or this video or reload my channel. And the thumbnail for this video will show you the almost finished version of this because it's not done yet. I still have to do another once over or two to fully flesh it out and complete it. But um, it's pretty much done at this point. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap us up today. We got a little bit of work done, but we focus mainly on the inner workings of uh, the piece here for the deflector dish, which is going to come out pretty cool. But yeah, that's definitely going to wrap us up. I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in today's episode. And if you did enjoy this content, uh, help me out, hit a like and subscribe button. I definitely appreciate it. And uh, of course, you can always catch my new Minecraft videos because remember, my schedule has changed now. My episodes drop Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. And of course, if you have any questions regarding today's episode or any ships or builds that you want to see me do, or just dropping by to say, hey, be sure to drop a comment below. Definitely love hearing from everybody. And uh, that's going to do it. Just want to thank you all again. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week. And of course, what did you make in Minecraft today? Let me know in the comments section.